Drew. Hi. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Happy birthday, Donna. Thank you, thank you. So we look forward to hearing about your artwork and how you use artwork to advocate for others and why you think artwork is so, so important in the classroom. So thanks again. Thank you so much, Jonna. It's so wonderful to be here for the 17 for 17 advocating for girls education. And uh, when you reached out to me several weeks ago um, to tell me about this, I was so excited and also so happy that you took a little bit of inspiration from another event that we did recently called Finding Beauty in Quarantine Times, which was a 24 hour global live stream. And so I'm so happy to see wonderful things uh, continue to, to flourish out of that. So I, uh, Camilo, can you bring up my uh, first slide? So I'm gonna talk about the importance of STEAM for girls' education. And uh, the title of my presentation today is Teaching Creativity from STEM to STEAM. So do any of you guys know who this person is? This person is widely acknowledged to be the greatest bongo drummer of all time. Well, actually uh, he isn't really known for that. His name is Richard Feynman. And while he was a great bongo drummer, he was also one of the greatest physicists of the 20th century. And on top of that, he started drawing at the age of 44. He had a friend named Jerry, who was an artist, and Jerry convinced Feynman to pursue his interest in art with lessons at the Pasadena Art Museum. Feynman said he had to get the courage to, to go. He had to actually work up the courage. And it's, it's amazing, because if you imagine, here's this giant of physics who was at the time advising NASA, advising presidents, and he was getting nervous about an art lesson. In the first class that he entered into, there were all these people in a room, they were drawing a, a nude, and he quickly realized he was out of his depth. But the long story short is that he got quite good at art. Here are actually some of his drawings and paintings. He created a whole body of impressive work, but what motivated him to pick up painting so late in life? I think this is fascinating. He says, I wanted very much to learn to draw for a reason that I kept to myself. I wanted to convey an emotion I have about the beauty of the world, a feeling of awe, of scientific awe, which I felt could be communicated through a drawing to someone who also had this emotion. It could remind him for a moment of this feeling about the glories of the universe. But did art really help Feynman become more creative? Did it influence his physics? Well, it actually did. And this is a very interesting uh, statement here from one of his friends, uh, Albert Hibbs. And he says about Feynman that most scientists use the mathematical tools we have learned to work our way through a tangle of complex physical process. But for Richard, the process itself was visual no matter how tangled it might seem to others, and he bent mathematics to match his visions. But some of his visions could be very well drawn, like the famous Feynman diagrams, which so greatly simplified the calculation of interactions between light and matter and helped him win the Nobel Prize. And that is a statement from Albert Hibbs, Hibbs who was a noted mathematician, a friend of Feynman's, and also himself, he was a kinetic sculptor. And what about this guy? As a child, at the very early age of four, he began playing the violin and later said, Mozart's music is so pure and beautiful that I see it as a reflection of the inner beauty of the universe itself. Also, music wasn't a diversion or a hobby. It really helped him think. Whenever he felt that he had come to the end of a road or faced a really difficult challenge in his work, his son, Hans Albert, reported that he would play music. Einstein was also known to improvise melodies in the kitchen late at night and suddenly out of the blue just shout, I've got it. He also said that if I were not a physicist, I would probably be a musician. I often think in music, I live my daydreams in music, and I see my life in terms of music. Some will say that's all good, but who knows what's happening in the minds of these geniuses? Maybe they're all weird. I mean, 
Don't we just need more solid engineers? Don't we just need to throw more bodies at scientific and technological progress? Shouldn't we spend all our resources on STEM, that is to say science, technology, engineering, and math? Not really, because quantity does not equal qualitative leaps. And those are driven by people like Feynman and Einstein. So I'd like to make the case today to you for moving from STEM to STEAM in girls' education, in all education, in all education policy, in our classrooms all around the world. Being more interdisciplinary and less siloed in the way that we teach. So clearly I've just shared with you some really strong anecdotal stories, but perhaps those are outliers. What is really happening at the aggregate level? Well, the aggregated statistical evidence shows that with scientists, the higher you go in terms of their accomplishments, the stronger their skills in the arts are. There's a superb study, it's really fascinating, by Dr. Robert Root Bernstein of Michigan State University. He tracked the arts avocations of scientists. The scientists were considered to have an arts avocation if they or their biographer had described them as having a deep and profound interest in an art form. So we're not talking about hobbies here. You'll see in this diagram that the average scientist had an average of 0.33 arts avocations. That means one in three scientists in the general population. You can see that the, nas the average National Academy of Scientists, scientists had 0.56 arts avocations. That means one in two. However, the average Nobel laureate scientist had 0.94 arts avocation. That means nine out of 10. Of course, a few had none and some had double, but nearly all. So if you look at this, this study also showed that Nobel laureates in the sciences are 25 times as likely as the average person to sing, dance, or act 17 times as likely to be a visual artist, 12 times more likely to write poetry and literature, eight times more likely to do woodworking or some other craft, four times as likely to be a musician, and twice as likely to be a photographer. And there are tons of engineering inventions where the arts played a significant role. Did you know that Alexander Graham Bell was a gifted pianist from the time that he was a teen and that his observations about the piano directly inspired him to invent the telephone? Yes, the same telephone that has been changing our lives for generations all the way up to today's smartphones. And did you know that Robert Fulton, the inventor of the steamboat and Samuel Morse, the inventor of the telegraph were accomplished painters? that the Wright brothers, the inventors of the first airplane, were also talented musicians. Orville and, with the mandolin and Wilbur with the harmonica. In fact, I have gone to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC to see that exact mandolin, which is on display right next to the Wright airplane. And did you know that the single most influential course that Steve Jobs took in college was, by his own admission, a course in calligraphy. And that's a photo of Jobs' teacher at Reed College, whom he never forgot and credits him with inspiring him to entirely transform his thinking about the Macintosh. If you haven't watched Steve Jobs' commencement speech at Stanford University, check it out on YouTube because he tells the story there and is tremendously inspiring. None of this, what we're talking about today, would have been surprised the artist, scientist, inventor, Leonardo da Vinci, who said, art is the queen of all sciences, communi communicating knowledge to all the generations of the world. The bottom line uh, is that policymakers, few of whom have ever taken a quality science or arts class in their long, past post-secondary education are telling us that we should only encourage and invest in STEM. And that would have surprised Leonardo. If he were here today, I think he would find that downright shocking. And I think he would find it to be a step backwards. But what about someone from our own times? Well, Charles Vest, the former president of MIT, and the former president of the National Academy of Engineering said, 
I cannot imagine MIT without its visual arts and performing arts component. So if you want to invest in the future of science and engineering, then you have to invest in the arts. The arts, like nothing else, drive head-spinning leaps of the imagination that really advance technology and science. And so that is what I want to leave you with today, uh, a, a very uh, hopefully provocative angle on education, on girls' education, on education policy. And I also want to say happy, happy birthday to Jana. It's so wonderful to be part of this very meaningful and impactful celebration. All of us are excited to see where you're going to take 17 for 17 next. Thank you so much. Thank you, Drew. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing with us why arts are so, so important. And I think we can all agree now that really we should bring the arts back and help more girls be educated um, in doing so. So thanks again for joining. And by the way, everybody, um, Drew mentioned this, but yes, the idea was inspired from her own birthday celebration a couple of weeks ago. And so we're really grateful for the inspiration too. I think that's often the way you know, um, mentorship works. And I think I'm very, very grateful to have amazing mentors like her from the young global leader community. So, John, can I just, can I just say one thing, one thing real quick? Um, the important thing I think about this whole presentation is not so much just about the arts or mm -hmm. tech or engineering, but the importance of integrating yeah. them mm -hmm. and being interdisciplinary and looking for the connections. Certainly, yeah, thank you for highlighting mm -hmm. that for us. And next, we'll actually be talking a little bit more about the interdisciplinary nature of everything and the importance of mentorship. So please do hop on to the next session, um, and I'll see you there. Great, thanks, Jonna.